massive problem in the UK. There's not enough tradespeople, whether you're a tiler, plasterer, chippy, sparky. Kids aren't naturally thinking about, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a, a brickie. Yeah, you know, there's mucky. And there's not a lot of mucky in the vans going on. Not enough people willing to get their hands mucky. If it's not addressed now, it's going to be a massive problem. So we've got to just give them that option. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is a reality. And see if we can get some kids interested. We're in Donning. We're in Doncaster. Don Valley School. Yeah, Don yeah, I, I get confused with like school and academy gubbins. It's a school, isn't it? It's a Don Valley School. What the hell are we coming to as a nation if one in nine of our youths cannot change a light bulb? All the practical skills that the kids would have just learnt going through life, they don't happen anymore. Young people don't really see trade as a career. We go around the country doing various different projects. Quite a few we do in schools. Someone's got to open up the kids' eyes to all of these careers and having a go at something, that's the best way to do it. The bit that we're renovating is that bit of cobbling is from an old farmyard. It was a bit scruffy, wasn't it? It's been unmaintained. It's all weeds coming through it and just a bit, a bit grossy, really. This has been here for a week or two, then, hasn't it? Just a few weeks. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right, but protected. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, okay. Uh, so you're going to try and make something of it. Yeah. That's the plan, right? A student in my year, she lost her dad in January. Right. Um, and she said, I, I would like somewhere to go where I can remember. The idea only came last half term, like the end of last year, for each and every student that's lost someone. The whole point of this was to have somewhere nice and quiet, nice and calm, where they can come and sit and, and remember if they want to. And we are trying to expose students to different experiences and different jobs that are out there. Right. Bloody brilliant. Yeah, I don't think we did bugger all when we was kids. Yeah. We never did out yeah. practical. Well, we've, we've had quite a few wanting, wanting to get involved and come out and, right. Uh, right, and right. get hands on. There's less and less apprentices coming forward. When your prepping is good, your finished product is going to be good. Now, you need to unlock their potential. It would be great to have kids that could wield a spanner, wield a saw, do all the practical things, but that's not how the world's evolving, is it? But we're still going to need these. We are still going to need them. We're going to be in a hell of a state if we've got no one to fill this massive void of um, tradesmen. Tradespeople, men, people, tradesmen, tradespeople. Right, I'm gonna get stuck in there, no way. Where do you want me? I don't really know what I'm doing. I think you are bench building. Am I? All right, mate, I'll do whatever you want, <laughs> whatever you want, mate. As long as I'll get stuck in. I'm not sure I'm getting stuck in, mate. I'll have a go. <laughs> She's a bit Mickey Bing Bong, mate, isn't she? <laughs> hey? Hi. Me and Ethan, we had a set of plans building a um, garden bench. All right, mate, so you got any plans? And when are you leaving school? Yeah, this year. To do what? My original idea was to be a joiner. Right. My dad were a joiner. I'd always said, like, just after he'd passed that, I want to do what he did. Yes, yeah, yeah. When I was five, I, my dad passed away. Since that day, I've always said I wanted to do joinery. It's always been something in my heart that I've always wanted to do. Yes, yeah, yeah. I realised that you can do what I want to do in the army. Is that when I want to steal that? You do get some great opportunities in the forces, mate, don't you? Yeah. I'll start in the forces, but I wouldn't have it as a long term. I'd say 10, 15 years, and then come back out on civilian streets and be the joiner. He's into it, he's into it. What, what else else do you do outside of that? Nothing, really. But chasing lasses are out. I already got one. Are you? Yeah. Are you? Yeah, how long have you been with her? Oh, it's nearly two months now. Oh, yeah, that's a long time, but... Yeah, we got caught in a bit of wood up. Yeah, we had a go, didn't we? We had a go. I think he did think it was going to be a doddle. It took him a bit longer than, than he anticipated. Hang on, mate. Hang on, mate. Need to recalibrate the measuring tape, hey? Yeah, <laughs> Wang a bit off the end of that, mate, and that'll be right, won't it? 
It was great. I probably learnt more off him than he learnt off me. So, yeah. Let me hold it while you drill them. PPE. Oh, come on, mate. I like that. You're on top of this job, mate. I like it. When you start, you look at it, you see someone, you think, it's not going to end, end up how it's going to be. And then when it comes closer to it, you just see it all coming together and you just think, I'm mad that how I've done that myself. Yeah, she looks like a bench, though, doesn't she? Yeah. She needs a bit of crease sort on it. You can't do crease sort in now, can okay? you? Two other lads had to go up building another bench. We was in competition. We was in competition. I'm catching up to us now. Are they? Yeah. Oh, I need to, be, need to be nicking that drill and screwdriver back off them. All right, you might have finished it before us, but it's their bench. It isn't like um, the drawings that we were given. So I'm saying it doesn't really count. Yeah. I'm always a believer speed's your friend, mate, but not in this case. Cracking job, that boy. Yeah. No messing, eh? Yeah, we had a brew on it, mate. That's how you test it. Got to sit and have a brew on it. Me and him sat on it, yeah. It's the only way to test it. <laughs> I'm not moving about too fast, mate. He's over the moon with it, Ethan. That's great. It's put together bench now and okay. well shoved. Job well done, I think. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing how many people are actually involved and how many people just taking time out of the day to do something that I planned. My dream being made, really. It's amazing. There was grafting. There was grafting. Yeah, there's a lot of sweat being lost today, I think. I know, I didn't hear any complaints. Yeah, but the, the butties and the teas were, were flowing well, weren't they? Do you want any sauce? Oh, I love some sauce, Harry. Thank you. Grand job. Brown? Is it Ethan? I'm a brown sauce. I like the no, brown sauce. No, it's red. Right? It's red. <laughs> yeah, it's red. It's always red. We haven't been short of brews today, boys. Thank you. Thank you. Met Jack. How's it going, Jack? All right, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. I'm Guy. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, mate. Full of confidence, that lad. Good lad, good lad. Got a plan. The plan is we've got to paint this entire table this colour yellow. How's the paint department looking? The purple's looking very purple. It does look very good. Purple's my favourite colour. Oh, is it? It is. I've always been partial to a bit of purple. I've always enjoyed doing stuff like we've been doing today, and I just don't think people really consider that sort of line of a job anymore, and I really think they should do, because it's a lot of fun, there's a lot of enjoyment to be had out of it. You don't know anyone that's getting no. into the, going into the trades? I, w I wish I could say to you, oh, yeah, I know a load of people, but I'd be lying to you. Is that right? Yeah. And it's a shame, because I think people should do it, because you can learn a lot of valuable skills out of it. Oh, well, yeah. And as well as all that, it's a really well-paid job. Exactly. <laughs> He said all kids seem to be sheep, all doing it because the mates are doing it. It's not seen to be the cool thing to do to get into the trades. How would you make it a bit more attractive so kids wanted to leave school to go and lay bricks or plumb pipe? I think simply days like this, where they can come and do loads of different activities, you know, building fences or benches or crafting, anything, just to okay. give them that sort of feel for it, to give them that sense of enjoyment of it, so that they can think, you know what, actually, this is all right, this. I think it is. The politicians should realise this and think this is going to be a problem. We need to be proactive to it rather than reactive to it. We need to get to it before it is a problem. I mean, it is a, a little bit of a problem now, but it's only, this problem's only going to go one way. It's only getting worse. But how long does it take them to make a decision? Really, really amazed. I can't believe the transformation. What the guys have created today is, is absolutely fantastic. They've achieved everything we've asked of them. It's absolutely beautiful, and just all the fencing and the painting and the signs, is, it's just absolutely amazing. I love it all. To be honest with you, I think that's been a brilliant day. We have a really nice little garden for the kids to use. You look at it now, you think, well, yeah, we've made a bit of a difference in a day. Hopefully, it's something for them to sit and chill out. No, I'm impressed, I'm impressed. To get young people like ourselves to get hands-on with jobs like this, it's a great experience and great for the school. <laughs> I think a few people are going to go away and actually think, do you know what, we've enjoyed it that much that they might go away and consider that as a possible career. The way the, they're doing the work and just getting hands-on, it, it fills my heart with joy. 
There is a bit of enthusiasm in today's youth. There is a bit. We've got to dig deep, but we found it in Doncaster. Bloody brilliant, isn't it?